Yeah, just the brass, please. No guitars, no keyboards. All right. One more time. Two, three, four, five, six, bar four. I think that my parents' sense of adventure rubbed off on me in that I really wasn't afraid to try new things that interested me. My first professional engagement was um, singing Norwegian songs to homemakers clubs at the age of five years old, with my mother accompanying me on piano. That was my first taste of performance, so to speak. I played French horn through junior high school, through high school played in the Jamestown High School Band, and kind of got bitten by the, the music thing. Um, I remember when I was, I think around 17, I bought a book that was written by Henry Mancini called Sounds and Scores, and it was the first book of its kind. And I was absolutely fascinated by writing music for film. It was just, um, it was a knockout to me. Henry Mancini's, uh, his talent, his ability to mix instrumental colors in unusual ways and write unusual kinds of compositional elements all just kind of really grabbed me and I thought, man, this guy's really something. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be fabulous to have a career like that and have the ability to write original music for film and have my music played by musicians of that quality? Rick, how's the uh, drum sound? Play a little bit, Bernie. I first met Elf, I believe it was on a concert at the American Society of Composers and Lyricists. I was like, oh, it's Elf Clausen, you know. Cool, I'm getting to work with him. He's definitely uh, demanding of, you know, a high level of, I'd call it perfection, you know, because a lot of our, our cues that we do are short sometimes, so it's just starting them and ending them sometimes. It's hardly any middle section occasionally and we got to be right on it and he's very alert to that and great ears and uh, but fun to be with too and work and you know it's a good time yet it, it gets serious about getting it getting it right yeah, so it's great. My years at NDSU I think solidified um, a number of things for me. Um, they taught me what it was like to deal with people with respect. First impressions were that uh, he was he was very loyal. He was very loyal. He was very like a nice, a real gentleman. And uh, I know he was very loyal because when I worked for him, I could see that he always used the same musicians on whatever show that we were we were doing. In fact, I think 60% of the musicians, at least 60% now with this show are the original people. What he does, he's, he knows how to get the best out of all the musicians. He has it's just a way, of, a way of working that. I have a very uh, focused sense of loyalty. Um, my musicians and I are like a family. Uh, I have now, unfortunately getting to be fewer and fewer, but I have now three musicians who have worked for me for 33 years, starting with the Donnie and Marie show and they have done every show that I have done in 33 years, and um, they're absolutely proud of it, and I'm absolutely proud of it as well. I met Alf in 1976. Uh, I was playing first trumpet on the Donnie Marie Osmond show. Alf uh, came in, and he was one of the uh, many writers they had for the show. The next year, Alf was the leader, and uh, we've had a 32-year um, uh, relationship, um, and it's uh, just been a wonderful musical relationship for me. And, and as a leader and a writer, he's been just uh, really terrific. He has been a musician, a uh, French horn player, singer, bass player. So he knows how to uh, interact with the musicians on, with their language, with, uh, I'm gonna say our language, you know, it, it, it's, it's a definite language that, that you speak in. Uh, not only using musical terms, but just descriptions of uh, how you want certain passages uh, to sound. I think probably Alf is one of the most kindest, most respectful of musicians um, of all the composers I know. He's, he's got a heart that's 
bigger than the universe. He's incredibly generous, um, very patient. Sometimes when things go wrong, he um, he's just he's an amazing human being that has talent that just exudes out of him. I mean, this man can write anything, you know, and I've seen it all. To have the job he has and dealing with the people behind the scenes, that takes a special skill right there, you know. And not everybody's cut out for that because you have to know when to say the right thing and just to keep the peace, you know. But he, he, his strongest point is just being a good human being, and I think that's what we all should strive for. <laughs> if I ever can say that I had a regret about going to college as to what I wished I would have done, I wished I would have taken psychology courses, because dealing with an orchestra is a challenge, and one needs to know a little bit about psychology to do that. But uh, overall, we're a big, happy family. We just have little spurts here and there, and they get settled, and we move on, because everybody loves being there. And, and um, I try to bring that um, ethic to the, to the workplace, to make them want to come to work and make them have a good time. I love his sense of humor. <laughs> he's got a great sense of humor and uh, very musical. I mean, he's got some big ears, and, and uh, everybody knows what that means. I mean, he can hear things that you, you just go right by you. And he pulls them out, and you go, whoa, that's really there. That was there, yeah. Because sometimes I'm going for the big, the whole total package, but he can nail something right in the middle of that that I've just kind of missed, and pull it all together. We've been working together now 19 years. We've done over 400 episodes together, from the scores to the orchestration to his readiness to conduct or if he sometimes sits in the booth, his readiness to listen and also his desire to always get the best. It, the way he goes about it is that he's, he's not always thinking that my way is the best way. I mean, obviously, his way is the best way most of the time, no question about it. I mean, he's, he's, the, uh, he's the creative force behind the music, but he's open to suggestion. Uh, he's amazing, really. I mean, that's, you know, he has set the bar very high for me, especially when it comes to, you know, I, I made a decision to work in the same business. And I'm reminded of that, of that quite a bit because he's so amazing at what he does that One, I two, have three, certain expectations four, that I have five. to live up to as well. And it's inspiring, you know? It really, it, it makes things easier for me because I have someone to look up to that I know is successful at this and does it well and it, it is, makes things much easier, I think, to know what is possible when someone that close to you has had that level of success. Well, I don't know if I really dreamt of awards. I mean, I was aware of them. I had several Emmy nominations before winning my first Emmy. When I say several, I believe that it was... I had either 15 or 16 Emmy nominations before winning. I used to joke with Sally, uh, my wife Sally, that I was a Susan Lucci of composers. Yeah. Um, so I finally won, and it was it was really a thrill to finally finally nail one, you know, because I was getting tired of going to these uh, awards and not not uh, getting lucky. So that was a nice thing. It was a very nice thing, and the statues are real, you know, they're heavy as all get out. They're they're fabulous. So I've been very blessed over the years. I've had a total of 28 Emmy nominations and two wins. I can honestly say that it doesn't get much better than this. Um, it really is living a dream. And um, I had this vision from an early age that I had no idea how to capture and put into reality. But somehow or another, it all just kind of fell into place uh, with a lot of uh, Midwestern determination. Alf Clausen is a marvelous, consummate musician, a wonderful person. You can't, you can't beat him. He's my hero. He's a gift to all of us. He's a, a lover of mankind. Alf Clausen is a gas. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs>